up youtube bronix with it another tutorial and in this tutorial i want to show you guys high-end skin retouching in photoshop and this is going to be a very short tutorial unlike my usual detailed tutorials so let me show you guys every single step uh, in this short tutorial you're going to be doing skin retouching dodging and burning and color grading of this image plus eye whitening for this very image so let's kick in and start learning about dodging uh skin retouching rather so first of all, I'm going to make two copies out of the background by hitting Ctrl Command J twice. And after doing that, select the middle layer and I'm going to name that low frequency and I'm going to name this high frequency just like that. And after doing so, I'm going to hit enter, turn off the high frequency layer and come to the low frequency layer. First of all, I want to blur out uh, the textures from the low frequency layer since it only contains the colors and the skin tone so i'm going to come to filter blur and come to gaussian blur so when i come to gaussian blur here i have to choose a radius where by it is going to blur out the details from the image so i'm just going to zoom out slightly and look for the area that has more textures than the rest of the image so move this radius of the blur to up to a point when I'm, tr I'm starting to lose out on the skin uh, details in this image. So I think at around 8 I've lost out on the details and the image looks a little bit blurry so don't mind about that. Hit OK. Then come to the high frequency layer and I'm going to activate it. Come to image and I'm going to come to apply image. So when I come to apply image I have to first of all select this low frequency layer and Remember, I want to, since this is a 16-bit image, I'm going to come to the blending mode and I'm going to change it from multiply to add. And now, opacity at 100, preserve transparency and mask at not checked rather. Scale is 2, offset 0, and make sure I turn on the invert. And I'm going to ha come and hit OK. So my textures are going to be on this gray kind of layer. Simply come to the blending mode, change it from normal. And I'm going to change it to linear light and I'll, I'll get back the image the way it was meant to be or to look like. So after doing that, I'm going to come and I'm going to create a black and white adjustment layer and slightly darken it just because I want to see every area that has an even skin tones in this image. So after doing that, I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to click on the lowermost layer and hit Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard to group all this and I'm going to name that uh, FS for frequency separation. So I'm going to turn off the caps lock key and select the layer that contains the skin tones or the colors in this image. Come to the brushes and uh, simply right click and get my mixer brush tool. And for those that don't have it right here, simply come down here for other versions of Photoshop and right click and look for a mixer brush tool. So we want to set up the mixer brush tool so that it can allow us to even out the skin tones really well and nicely so simply come to the settings and make sure it is a clean brush so we have two options right here always make sure to select the second option because we want photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us when you are trying to even out the skin tones in this particular image wetness is 9 load 75 mix 90 and the flow 100 percent make sure sample all layers is not checked or marked so when you're now on your low frequency layer, simply come and slightly zoom in and using your mixer brush tool, start evening out the skin tones in this image by clicking. So basically I'm left clicking and moving uh, the cursor. And as I'm doing this, I'm blending the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone and the shadows alone in this particular image. So I'm just going to do that and even out the skin tones in this particular image. So the way I'm doing this, I'm reducing on the size of the mixer brush tool by simply using the brackets on the keyboard. So the brackets are right and after the P on the keyboard. So after P, that key, P for pen. So I'm, I'm basically clicking, left clicking and uh, dragging uh, my brush uh, towards the, the direction of the shape I'm trying to blend or even out in this particular image. So you can see how the black and white layer is really being helpful to help me 
kind of even out the tones or the skin tones in this particular image. So I'm just going to do that. And as you're blending, blend the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone in this particular image, just like that. So let me just come and even out those tones. So I have a highlight, I'm just going to blend it alone. And I have some kind of shadows here, a highlight right here, just come and blend just like that. So you can as well work without uh, the black and white layer. So turn it off and you see those areas you haven't blended quite well. And come back and blend them or even them out even more. So I think that looks okay. So after doing this, and I feel like I'm comfortable uh, with the results from the mixer brush tool. I'm basically going to use the second method that is using the lasso tool method uh, to even out the skin tones in the image. So remember when you're doing skin retouching, always and always make sure that you uh, retouch the overall image or every single part in the image. So I'm just going to come to the neck area and I'm just going to even out uh, the skin tones around the neck area of this very model. So let me just come and ev even, the even out those tones. So I think uh, that looks okay. So let me just even out the tones right this side. So make sure when you're doing skin retouching, uh, you even out every single area in the image. So just like that. And I'm just going to come to the fingers and I'm just going to even out the tones in the finger area. So I think uh, that uh, looks okay for the mixer brush tool a step or process for the skin retouching. So always make sure that you even out every single an even tone in the image so and as you're doing that always and always make sure that you blend or even out every tiny area in uh, the image so I think uh, that looks okay so let's say before and after for the mixer brush tool process so I think I haven't blended this area quite well so after doing that come to the lasso tool and now make sure feathering is 22 pixels and and alias is selected so come and left click to and move to draw a shape around the skin area that you want to perfect remember this is a perfection step but as you're selecting the area always and always make sure you're on your low frequency layer come to filter come to blur and come to gush and blur so after doing this move this radius towards the right hand side up to a point when you're starting to feel like you're getting the right skin texture for your image. So simply hit OK. And now we're going to apply the effect onto the overall image. So make a shape the way the area is uh, shaped rather. Right click and come to Gaussian Blur. And if at all you feel that the effect is too much, simply hit Shift Control F or Shift Command F on the keyboard. And you're going to be able to fade or reduce the opacity of that effect that has been applied on a particular area of the skin so let's do this and you're going to go straight into uh, the dodging and burning and finally the color grading process and the eye whitening for this image and after doing everything you're going to be learning about the best way to export a sharp image in photoshop so that image that is not going to uh, change in color when we maybe post it on social media or when we put it on a different device in after the post production rather so i think uh, that looks okay so right click and come to gaussian blur so i'm just going to come to the eye just like that and continue applying the effect so come to the nose area and make a shape just like that so right click and come to gaussian blur and do the same for this side and as you can see, I'm avoiding that highlight because I don't want to flatten it out. And I think that is a mistake most people that use frequency separation do. They tend to apply the effect on the nose area and it tends to flatten it out completely. And it takes out that nice and wonderful highlight from the image. So I think we are done uh, doing the uh, skin retouching for this image. So let's just apply it just uh, right here on the neck area. Come to Gaussian Blur and I think uh, that looks okay and nice. So this is the before, after, before, after. So after doing so, you're going to come to the Clone Sum tool and select the high frequency layer and remove those uh, remaining blemishes. So 
hold down the alternate key to sample and click on a clean area to sample and click over the blemish to get rid of it from uh, the image. So basically that is how to uh, remove those uh, remaining blemishes and clean up the image even more. So I'm just going to clean up those tiny blemishes that are remaining in this uh, particular image. And when I'm done doing so, I'm basically going to now go straight into the dodging and burning. And remember what is dodging and burning. Dodging and burning is basically more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows <clears throat> in a particular image in order to have that kind of three-dimensional look, uh, three D feel, or look to that image. So I think we are done removing the blemishes. So I'm just going to come select the black and white layer and delete it. And now close the frequency separation group and come to the curves adjustment layer. Remember, when we are dodging, we'll be enhancing the highlights. And when we are burning, we'll be enhancing the shadows in a particular image. So we're going to come to the curves and just simply close that. Come to select and come to color range. So when you come to the color range option, we always have to make sure that our sample layers is checked. And selection is also active and quick mask is also selected. So when you do this, come and select the area that has shadows in the image, just like that. And when it is selected, you're going to notice that the shadows are going to turn a little bit green. And now you can come and change the fuzziness to uh, what you wish. And now simply come and hit OK. So when we come to this curves adjustment layer, you can now double click and now darken just like that to add more dimension to the shadows of the image. And you're going to do the same for the dodging. You're going to come and come back to the curves adjustment layer, come to select and come to color range. And this time around, you're going to sample from the highlights. And I think that is too much. So I'm just going to reduce on the fuzziness up to a point when the highlights have really been selected. And this time around, they're going to be some kind of uh, light green in color and come and hit OK. Make a midpoint and this time around just brighten uh, those highlights, just a slight brightening up. And if at all you feel it is affecting the colors in the image, simply come to the blending mode and change it from uh, normal and change it to luminosity. And do the same for the second burn and you're going to do the same. Change it to luminosity and you're going to put this two in a group by hitting Ctrl Command G on the keyboard. They're going to name that uh, D and B for dodging and burning. So you can see the before and after for the dodging and burning. So I think that effect is too much. You're going to reduce on the opacity of our dodging and burning for this particular image. Up to around 49 before after. I think that is not too much. And after doing that, we're going to create a stamp visible layer by, by hitting rather shift alternate command E on the keyboard and you're going to duplicate that by hitting Ctrl or command J on the keyboard then come to filter come to the camera roll filter and when you come to camera roll here is where we are going to be doing more magic to this image come to the blue primary first of all and uh, desaturate uh, the blues from the image to around negative 11 and do the same for saturation of the green primary to around negative Let's go with around negative 11 too. And we're going to do the same for the reds in this case, uh, to around negative 10. I think that looks okay and nice. And you're going to come all the way to the HSL panel and do some little bit more of tweaking to this image. First of all, we're going to come to the luminance. And remember, luminance is more about lightness or darkness of a particular color. So if at all I turn the oranges up, it's going to lighten up the oranges and vice versa. So we're just going to darken by turning it towards uh, this darker side and that is turning down the luminance and we are going to come to the saturation and we are going to reduce on the saturation of the oranges in this particular case just reducing them a little bit then we are going to come to the hues and we are going to add some kind of a uh, greenish feel to our orange just like that and let's see a before and after before after for the color grading process uh, in camera row. So we are just going to come up the adjustments and we're going to add some little bit of contrast to this image to around seven. And since we want to whiten the eyes of this model, we're just going to simply zoom into the eyes and come to the adjustment brush tool. And you're going to set it. Remember, we just want to 
uh, white in the white area of the eye so since we have some yellows in the white area we're just going to come to the opposite of yellow which is blue and just move it around negative 24 and since we have some greens in the white area we're just going to move the tint towards the opposite of green which is around 65 and you're going to add some kind of highlights in this image to around 4 and the whites to around a 4 and now since we have color in the white area we're just going to desaturate but not taking it all the way down to around negative 62 and we're just going to start painting over or in the white area of uh, the models I, I think uh, that looks okay and nice and we're just going to do the same for a second eye hold down the space bar and click to move and I just paint over the second eye just like that and I think that looks okay and nice so after we have done the eye whitening we're just going to go to Photoshop for more color grading of this image so I'm just going to come and hit OK and they're just going to come to the Photoshop for more color grading so you can see the before and after for this very image and after you're just going to come to a selective color option and come to uh, the blacks of this image and turn up the blacks just a little bit around two and also turn the yellows a little bit down to around negative five and i think that adds a whole different mode to the image then you're going to come to uh, the yellows and you're just going to reduce on the amount of yellows and also come to the reds and uh, drop down the magentas from the image just like that around negative two and let's see the before and after for the selective color option and that adds a way different mode to this very image and after we have color graded i think that is all we have to do for skin retouching color grading dodging and burning and finally we have to export this image in photoshop so in order to export this image we are going to be using a method that is going to enable us to have nice colors nice contrast and a beautiful image after we have exported it and you're just going to simply come to a file and they're going to come to export and they're going to come to export as so when you come to export as you have to choose the best settings that have to embed the colors and everything in the image we have been able to retouch so come and make sure you select the format which is a jpeg as usual so resampling change it to by cubic sharper from automatic change it to by cubic sharper and make sure you check convert to srgb and embed color profile so that the image that doesn't change in color after we have posted it on social media or put it onto a different device so after doing that come and hit export so you can name this uh, tutorial just like that and after doing that you can select a location where to save the image and simply hit save and your image is going to be saved in that given location and this is going to be closed automatically so you can see now what we have done for the image uh, retouching and color grading this is the image initially before and after before after so this has been a story about skin retouching color grading eye whitening and dodging and burning in photoshop to add a three-dimensional look or feel to the image and if at all you love this story don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more tutorials on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating if at all you want to be a nice retoucher or photographer out there. See you next time.